Hello friends, I am Dr. Manoj Bachao, plastic and cosmetic surgeon and uh, today we are going to speak about hair transplant. As all of you know, there is a lot of uh, material already available on various social media platforms and uh, YouTube on hair transplant but majority of it is either from non-doctors or we can say non-professionals. So we thought of uh, shooting this uh, vlog to give scientific information regarding various aspects of hair transplant. Today we are going to uh, speak about uh, whom should undergo uh, hair transplant or for whom the hair transplant is beneficial. In that we are going to speak about various grades of uh, hair loss and which grade you should opt for hair transplant. Uh, then what is the age range for the hair transplant. Does uh, a hair transplant is successful in diabetic and hypertensive patient. Uh, is it uh, done in females? If yes, then what are the different techniques? And then uh, the contraindications of hair transplant. So let us start with the very basic question that is uh, for whom the hair transplant is beneficial. So uh, if we look at the grades of alopecia or hair loss uh, as per Hamilton Nor Norwood scale there are from grade 1 to grade 7 of uh, alopecia or hair loss. Uh, grade 1 and 2 are uh, early. From grade 3 onwards, uh, the hair transplant can be considered. Basically, all cases of hair loss doesn't require hair transplant. This is the bottom line. Uh, the initial grades of hair loss can be managed with the medical treatment such as topical solutions and uh, tablets. Then the further, uh, if there is further loss of the hairs, then that can be managed with the injection therapies such as uh, PRP or mesotherapy. Uh, regarding PRP and mesotherapy, we can uh, talk uh, in the separate uh, session altogether. And uh, hair transplant is the last resort uh, for the hair loss. So there is a generalized uh, misconception for the uh, hair loss that if you are losing your hairs, let them, uh, yeah, let them uh, go away and then at the end we will do hair transplantation once the once you complete the hair loss so basically this is a purely uh, a wrong concept uh, because simply because the hairs are being taken from the back or the occipital area and uh, this area is limited that means if you are taking from the back the hair are not going to grow back there again so we have a limited donor area so if there is a hair loss it should be arrested at that point only and then for the, the remaining area we can consider hair transplant. Uh, this is one thing. Then the uh, second thing is there any a specific age range for the hair transplant. Uh, it is not specifically uh, certified or categorized uh, the, hair, uh, the age range for the hair transplant. But yes commonly from uh, 22 years to 65 years is considered as a age range for hair transplant. Uh, younger the patient, better the results, but uh, it is it is uh, do successful in older patients also. At Elite, we have done the uh, oldest patient of 64 uh, year old uh, male and uh, we had to got a, a fabulous result in uh, him. So uh, this is regarding age range of the hair transplant. Then uh, next question is, uh, does the diabetes or hypertension affect the hair transplant? Can it be done? Does the result vary? Diabetes or hypertension is not a contraindication for hair transplant, uh, but we need to control it. There are specific measures that need to be taken before taking up the patient for the surgery. We need to control the sugar, the blood pressure preoperatively. We need to monitor it intraoperatively and postoperatively also. If we control all these parameters, the hair, the results of the hair transplant in these patients are going to be uh, similar as other individuals. And we have done it uh, in our center with the definitely uh, satisfactory results. So uh, next question is, can uh, the hair transplant be done in females? See, in case of females, we try and avoid hair transplant as far as possible. Uh, always the primary treatment is medical uh, therapy, followed by uh, the, the for further grade, the PRP or the mesotherapy and hair transplant uh, can be done in females also for the higher uh, grades to increase the density or the to increase to augment the hairline further uh, there are some technical uh, vari technical uh, variations to be done in uh, while doing the female hair transplant 
the main uh, two differences as compared to male hair transplant are first is uh, the female hairline creation that is different from the male hairline and uh, the second one is non shaven hair transplant in female we don't shave off the recipient uh, area uh, we uh, we put the hairs in between the gaps and uh, now the, the last question that comes across is is there any uh, specific contraindications for the hair transplant uh, there are the contraindications include any kind of uncontrolled medical disease such as uncontrolled diabetes blood pressure or any other medical condition uh, contraindicates the hair transplant then uh, second thing is any topical infection of the uh, skin that is the infection of the scalp um, it may be active psoriasis or active seborrheic dermatitis and there are certain uh, types of uh, alopecia such as uh, alopecia areata or uh, trichotillomania uh, etc so this needs to be evaluated in the initial counseling then uh, the contraindications needs to be ruled out and then we can proceed further for the hair transplant uh, so next in next vlogs we are going to talk about is the hair transplant procedure painful why the hairs from the back are chosen for the hair transplant uh, how long does the hair stay once we transplant them can we shave it can we cut it uh, then what is the cost of the hair transplant and all, all these aspects thank you